In this video, we're going to look at something that I'm calling Octubuntu. So this is an Ubuntu uh, image that contains Octoprint, as well as a little script that I wrote called Octoprint Deploy. This allows you to have multiple instances of Octoprint running on a laptop or a desktop computer. Um, and it's a way that you can get these set up very, very quickly. So you can get going um, right away with your Octoprint instances. Um, the first thing you want to do is have some old piece of hardware that's set up. So, you know, it could be an old laptop or this old laptop or this old laptop or, you know, you get the idea. Uh, any of them. Really, you don't need any major hardware for doing this. Um, even I've had nine printers running on a Core 2 Duo. So it can be something pretty minor. The only thing that you want is ideally to have more than one USB bus. So that's going to be the limiting factor to how many printers you can actually hook up to a single machine. Um, I'm going to have the link for the Octobuntu um, image in the description of the video, as well as a link to Octoprint Deploy, so you can check those out independently um, if you'd like. So I'm going to get set up here. I'm going to flash the Octobuntu image onto a flash drive and get it installed. And it's going to work pretty much exactly like a normal Ubuntu installation. I'll just show you a little bit of this process. So we've just booted, uh, just booted from the USB stick and we are going to install here. So we'll move down here and we'll install. And I'm just gonna skip the wireless connection for right now. And I just recommend doing a minimal installation. I have done the desktop version of this. It would make a lot more sense to do a server version but just so that I could kind of show um, some things and, and do OBS and record the desktop, I've, I've stuck with this image being a, a desktop. So we're gonna install here. And this should take a second. And we already have something installed, so we're going to erase and install this. This does require you to put in a user up here. Um, there is a default user, which is Octo user with the password Fusil Rules. Uh, I'll have that in the description, but it's good to have this secondary user, something that you can use to SSH into this machine if you need to. And now just let it go, reboot, and get started. Okay, so I've completed the installation of Octobuntu, as I'm calling it, uh, and I've logged in as Octo user, which is the default user that's automatically established here. And the first thing you probably want to do is change your password. So if you go up here to settings, um, and then to, let's see, uh, users, and you can change your password here, definitely do that. Um, the first thing we're going to want to do is open up a terminal, because all of the commands that we're going to be running our terminal based commands here. And the first thing we'll do is just look at what we have going on. And our Octoprint installation, a Python 3 installation of Octoprint, is in this directory here. So we'll go to CD Octoprint, bin, and we will start Octoprint in server mode. And this is how we're going to establish our Octoprint instance. And then we're going to want to open a web browser. Of course, takes a little bit of time. And we're going to want to point this to localhost 5000 in this case. Oops, and you have to spell it right. Localhost 5000. And this is uh, the setup wizard. So, this is how we're going to establish the admin user who's going to have control over all the Octoprint instances. Um, 
So we're not going to do any of that. Access control here. Obviously, you can use whatever name you want. Keep access control. Uh, it's a good idea to enable anonymous usage tracking so Gina can, can see what's going on. And you can keep the connectivity check if you want. Keep the plugin blacklist if you want. Um, you can start to add to modify the default printer profile here if you want to. Um, you don't have to. Um, it's set sort of here to things close to Prusa style. Um, but you could adjust that if you wanted to. And here for server commands, for example, you'll notice there's some things that are pre-filled. Uh, this includes this capital instance here. So these are things that are going to get replaced um, when we do the multiple printer setup. So that way we'll be able to restart each of our instances if we want to. Uh, we're not going to do any webcam stuff right now. You can do that at, for each instance later on. And then we just click Finish. And we have everything basically set up here. So now we'll just go back to our Aqua instance, control C, it's going to kill that server. And you see this goes down here. And now we're going to do our printer deployment. So um, I don't have a lot of printers that I can set up right here, but I have a lot of printer boards. So in lieu of using printers, we're going to use these printer boards. And I've got a cheap little hub here that we'll be able to plug them all in. And um, hopefully everything works. So first thing we'll do is go to the Octoprint deploy. And we're going to have to use the sudo command to run these because we're going to do, be doing some modifications. So, oops. And you have to make sure that you have this set up. So we're going to add a new printer. OK. And we're just going to call this one printer1. One. It's important not to use spaces here because this would mess things up in the udev entries. So we're going to do printer1. And you'll notice that it says that if you enter, it's going to increment from the last value. So that means our first value that we're going to have will be on port 5001. So there it says selected port is 5001. We're going to run this as Octo user. And all of this stuff here is set up right now that you can just use defaults. And there's clear reasons why you might not. But for simple setups, using the defaults is great. And now it asks if we want to auto detect the serial number. And this is one of the nice features because um, what it's going to do then is it's going to add this to the UDEV entry and we'll always be able to find the correct printer. So we'll hit yes here. It asks us to plug the printer in. So now I'm, I'm doing that here and hopefully it's going to, there it goes. It says serial number is detected. There's the serial number for this printer. All right, and now we have just a couple more things to hit enter to. It asks if we want to proceed. And we hit yes. And we're adding that. And what this is going to do now is it's going to set up a system process so that every time we restart this computer, it's going to restart the Octoprint instance for this particular printer. And now what we should be able to do here is move this to localhost 5001. We can use our login information that we set up before. And there is our printer. So dev octo printer one. So this printer will always be there. And from we can connect up to that printer if we want. And there's no thermistors hooked up or anything. So you know it's not going to do much. But we are connected to to a printer here, as you can see. Okay, so let's go back. Now let's do these other printers that we have here. So we can go do the exact same process. So we have to add a new printer. And of course you could give these more descriptive names if you like. Um, and basically all we have to do here is keep hitting enter. And now it's asking us to plug the printer in. And we'll do that with this one here. And sometimes, there we go, serial numbers detected. I have seen a couple of times where it takes, you have to unplug and replug to get the serial number detected. And the only printer that I've run across that does not have a serial number is um, where some Ultimakers. So just be, be advised of that. And if we want to proceed, yes. And so this instance, as you can see right up here, this is going to be on 5002. So now we should be able to, let's just open up another one. We'll go to local posts. 
5002. Login. I'll just save it now. And we'll refresh our connections. And there's Octoprint Printer 2. And I don't know, it should do something if I connect to it. I'm assuming, yeah, you saw the blinky lights go. And now we have another printer that has lots of bed leveling data on it. Something I was playing around with. All right, so there's two, and uh, let's just let's do a third one just for good measure. So uh, let's make sure you do the right commands. Add new printer. This one will be printer three, uh, which is increment. So it'll be on five thousand three. Um, this is a Creality board, so I need to make sure, yeah, it's set up for a USB power. So hit yes here. And we'll connect up to this one, maybe. And there's our serial number detected now. And we'll proceed. to our local host 5003 now, because we're on port 5003. Log in. Kind of remember your password too. Refresh, and there is now Octoprint Printer 3. And you can, you know, save connections and auto connect at startup here when we do this connection. And um, yeah, there we are. We have our third printer hooked up, and these are all ready to go. So, you know, you could just go between these different instances if you wanted to set up Octa Farm. You can do that. The other neat thing about this is I'll, I'll just give you one example here where, um, if now I want to install a plugin, and let's see, we'll go to the plugin manager and we'll get more and uh, just because I wrote the plugin I'll show you installing the cancel object plugin so we'll install that and we're on printer instance one here uh, we can restart the instance Definitely not the uh, the fastest computer in the world. But here we'll go ahead and connect back up to our printer here. And you'll notice, oops, that the, the plugin's installed now. Now, if we do this, if we go to printer two, and we, oops, didn't mean to do that. close that down, it doesn't matter. We're, we're now on printer three here. So on printer three, um, I'm just gonna click restart Octoprint. I don't have any prints going or anything, so that's fine. I'll restart that. And you'll notice even though we did not install the plugin for printer three, I should really just do that update. We now have that because it'll update all of the plugins. It'll update Octoprint if you do any updates on any of them. Um, and that's very useful because you know you don't have to do any of these additional updates. The other thing you can do is, you know, if we wanted to now, if we reboot the system, you know, everything would be set up. And maybe let me connect real quick to uh, can't spell local today. 5002. Just to show you again here on printer 2, uh, we don't have the cancel object plugin installed. But now, if we restart Octoprint, And reload. All 
I'm just going to do that now. I'm not going to use this for anything, but that message is just annoying me. And of course, that now will have updated for all the other instances of Octoprint as well. And here we are, we now have the plugin enabled. Okay, um, that's really all you have to do. Now, if you wanted to do things like webcams, of course, you can go through and, and you can set that up for each of them individually. And because they're their own instances and everything's stored in, in the config.yaml file, you know, they do have their own independent settings. It's just that they share the Octoprint binary to run and they share the installed plugins that are already there. I hope you guys find this useful as a way of um, getting multiple Octoprint instances installed on a single machine.